Can you hear me? Ah, how about now? There we go. There we go. This is the second time this happened. Uh, I keep talking to myself for a couple of minutes, then people tell me that they can't hear me, and then I fix it. That's fine. Okay. Anyway, um, I was just I thought this was my my audio. I was like, I don't know what I can, what else I can do. <laughs> I I tend to just blame it on Crowdcast. You know, it's it's Crowdcast's fault. <laughs> no, as I was saying, um, <clears throat> today is the third day of. Uh, the kind of pre-hackathon, pre-builder competition uh, sessions that we have in store for everybody. Uh, today, we've got mostly non-technical stuff with Dan. Uh, you're going to be talking to us about uh, marketing and branding. Uh, Thomas and Cody are going to follow up with a session on community building. So uh, full-on non-technical. Uh, technical co-founders, please take note. <laughs> this is probably one of the better sessions that uh, I think you can attempt to gain some complementary skills. Uh, but in general, um, Dan has loads and loads of experience. Uh, he's going to uh, tell you a little bit also what's happening uh, at the Wormhole uh, Foundation and on the Wormhole side, just uh, peeking a little bit behind the, the curtains here. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Dan, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Confirming you can hear me, I just switched to my headphones. Sorry. Yes, Great. I can. And then I will share my screen. Okay, let's get started. So um, yeah, I'm going to do a session today about how to think about marketing as a founder in crypto. Um, I have been, I've been working in crypto for about six years. All of those roles have included marketing in some aspect. Um, and then prior to crypto, I worked in brand marketing in the pharmaceutical industry where I kind of learned the, the, the fundamentals and in a different industry. So um, over time, yeah, worked on four different projects in the crypto space, several launches, several tokens. I've been through a lot of different things. So I tried to just distill all of this down to 10 tips that you can hopefully, hopefully take away and, and implement some of these um, if you're a founder of a new, a new or existing project. Um, and I'm going to start with a few, a few examples of of things that you may not think are marketing, but actually are marketing. So just to get started, um, this is an example of a code base of an ERC-20 uh, contract. And people don't normally think of code or GitHub being marketing. But if your code is well organized, if it's, it's well commented, um, providing a good experience for the developers that are interacting with your project, this is a great form of marketing to one audience, which is developers. Um, another form of great marketing in the crypto industry is we, as the crypto industry, use Telegram a lot every day. So BD chats, integration chats, um, even DMs with, with people all over the industry. If you have excellent communication and, you know, around the clock kind of uh, communication with people that you're partnering with, integrating with, um, and even just as a founder being responsive, this is another great form of marketing that people don't normally think about. Developer documentation, another great form of marketing if, if you can provide very easy to read, organized, great tutorials, good on, onboarding experience to um, your documentation for your project. The people you hire, I'm not talking about just marketing, but BD, engineering, product, leadership team, all of the people that you hire begin to shape your brand. When people meet someone at a conference from your project, they will immediately associate that person's personality, the way that person made them feel with your with your project. So be sure to hire people that you want to associate with and you want to be out there representing you. Even things like internal processes, how fast and how efficient you are with payments to service providers, how fast um, and the fact that you just have on-time payments to your employees, which seems basic, um, you'd be surprised how often this doesn't happen in crypto, but basic things like even internal brand experience with um, employees as well as any external partners or vendors that are working with you, this is all forms, forms of marketing. And then this is, these are the more obvious 
of examples of marketing. Your website, so this is the Uniswap website. Your social media presence, so this is the Jupyter um, X account. These are all examples of, of marketing, and there's even more. All these words could will probably blow the mind of early stage kind of founders when you start to think about all the different aspects of marketing. Um, paid advertising, SEO, messaging, your website, your community, which is a massive part of marketing and crypto, branding. Um, I mentioned a lot of these things. I won't go through all of this, but this, the bottom line is this is meant to be a lot of words on a slide to show you that marketing is a very deep, um, a deep concept and takes a lot of thought and expertise. But I've narrowed all of this down to just 10 things that hopefully you can take away um, from this presentation as far as um, marketing tips for you know earlier stage crypto founders. So I'm going to go through these one by one. So number one is identifying your big vision. Um, the examples here are Tesla. Elon Musk took Tesla to a $1 trillion uh, valuation, which no one thought was possible. People laughed at him. And then what did he do when he reached a trillion dollar valuation? He released a whole nother kind of vision around robotics and how robotics were going to take Tesla to a 10 or $30 trillion market cap. So Elon is very good at painting the picture for what's coming next and always, you know, keeping people, taking people along for the ride as far as what's, what's ahead for his companies. SpaceX, another great example. Elon's a master at this. So on the SpaceX side, what is the vision of SpaceX? Why would someone invest in SpaceX? Why would someone go work for SpaceX? It's not because they want to, you know, like put one part onto a, a rocket. They want to take humanity to Mars. That's the vision of, of SpaceX. So again, these are things that, these are examples from outside of crypto. The same thing can apply um, within crypto. It's just painting the picture for why is your project important and where are we going? Where is the project going to be going in three, five, or 10 years? Um, on the content side, the one thing to remember, I, I think, is just that everything is so chaotic and busy and distracting on social media nowadays. And even the, the industry itself is very crowded. Um, so how do you stand out? You're not going to stand out by just writing a tweet about your latest product update. No one actually cares that much. Where you'll stand out is educating people and entertaining people, even more importantly. Um, Solana and Super Team um, in this photo here, they're a great example of, of teams who get this, entertaining people and then inserting um, messaging or key takeaways that you want people to have, but in a fun and entertaining way. The other bullet point here, education. Um, a lot of these projects in crypto are obviously very technical and difficult to understand for the not even for the average person, for most people in the world who aren't blockchain engineers. So um, I really think one of the best forms of marketing in crypto is actually just education in simple terms, in simple English that people can easily understand and take away and understand, okay, what does this project actually do? Um, and then last, making sure that when you have your team or when yourself, when you're writing content, understanding who your audience is Many projects in crypto have a user base and also so sometimes appeal to developers if you're a developer facing protocol. So when you're writing content for users, write it in that language. When you're writing content for developers, don't be worried to go super deep and technical um, because you don't need to be everything to everyone with all of your content. It should, it should have a specific goal and a specific audience. Next is community, which I mentioned earlier is of course, a massive part of marketing in the, in the industry. Um, but I think the thing that people oftentimes miss is that community building in crypto starts with one person, the very first person that shows interest in your project. That might be somebody commenting in your GitHub on your code. That might be someone coming into your Telegram channel or Discord or even coming up to you at a conference saying that they you know, they read your white paper or they heard about your project and they're interested. These are extremely important people um, early on in the project to show that you value them, to build relationships with them, and then to keep them keep them engaged. Like understand what they want, what their goals are. Um, 
so the, the point here is the first 10 people are probably the most important people to any community because you don't get to 100 without the first 10, obviously. Um, the other one is community. Uh, community tends to do well with ambassador programs or something similar to that. A lot of people around the world want to work in crypto. So this is a great way for people um, to break into the industry. Oftentimes they'll come in, contribute to the project, even volunteer their time, write content, host events, translate things, contribute to code. Um, but this is a, another great way to build up that first 10 to 100 people in, in any community. And then the, the third thing here is an important one, which is don't ever try to attract community or attract people by leading with incentives or tokens. This never leads to good outcomes, and it will only attract the wrong type of person for your project that doesn't care at all about your project. Project. All they care about is getting their tokens and moving on to the next team. Um, communicate often, be a leader, and be yourself. Um, when you're a crypto founder, you signed up to be the face and the voice and the personality of your project, and it's part of your job. It's very important to understand if you want to have any success. You can be a great engineer, um, a great product person, but if you don't have... Um, you know, public communication, visibility, and good marketing, which that's part of, the project will never go anywhere. Um, this is on the right here. This is Keone, the founder of, of Monad. Um, he does a great job of being human. He goes to the gym, posts these pictures, you know, like has fun with his community. It doesn't always have to be about Monad's parallelized EDM. It, it's about him showing himself being out there communicating and it's not just gym pictures obviously he's also writing in-depth intelligent content about things that he cares about and things that he's an expert on and that's one thing to remember is if you're working in crypto um, if you're especially if you're a founder you need to remember that you're an expert so you have a lot in your brain that people don't know or would be interested in hearing so um, as you have ideas just what I do like take notes in your phone on on ideas for even like threads, tweets, anything, and just constantly be um, trying to be out there in, in public. Um, quick one is investors. So once you do raise um, raise a round from investors at some point, obviously communication with them on a periodic, not too often, but maybe quarterly, something like that, just keeping people updated on what's going on is, is always really appreciated by investors. Building in the open, so instead of building, 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 then announcing, you can release roadmaps. You can talk about the progress you're making along the way and being kind of open and transparent about about progress. Um, and then last goes kind of along with the first point here, but being a founder-led project is really important nowadays. Um, one of those is building relationships in person with people. Um, practical uh, advice here, not critical but if possible if you live in like boston for example you should move to new york if you're a founder if you live in malaysia you should move to singapore these crypto hubs are actually really important for events for randomly meeting people at happy hours at events um but there are definitely crypto hubs in the world right now and they're worth being in being in if you're a founder um one last point here is don't ever fall for the trap of the fact that you're building or you're too busy to do external facing work. You need to be out at conferences. You need to be talking to people, building relationships, advocating for your project because you are the face and the voice of your project. And if you aren't doing it, no one will be. Um, prioritizing experience. So this is UX, so user experience as well as DevX on the developer side. For user-facing apps, um, we live in a world where we're, we're building this next web, but Web 2 is already really good. So we need to accept that and understand that we are competing with Web 2 quality user experience. So Coinbase, they're centralized, which is easier to have a good experience, but they have a great UI, they have a great app, great website, great overall experience, which is why they're crushing it. Um, Infinex and Jupyter, are great examples of apps, Infinex more recently, who are prioritizing great onboarding experience, simple UX, even not even having to use wallets, um, email, password type of setup. So 
building delightful, beautiful applications and easy to use experiences is, is of course very important. And it's kind of, it's definitely part of marketing and your brand. For developer facing protocols, um, this is more focused on how developers interact with your tools. So if you're, if you have an SDK, making sure that it's, it's organized, easy to use, prioritizing documentation. So tutorials, video content, um, yeah, walkthrough guides, I'm getting started. And then another one that's lesser, um, I guess just thought of less, less often is DevRel and integrations people on your team. Maybe early on it's actually you as a founder, but your level of support and your quality of support on integrations is going to go a long way. And if you have bad integration support, you can actually lose deals that you already won on the BD side. So making sure that your support for the people that you're working with and with the, the teams that you're partnering with is very strong. This will lead to great word of mouth, but also could lead to poor word of mouth if you're not providing that, that experience. Um, this is, this is a very important one. Um, sometimes technical founders think that developers and engineering and product is all that matters. And you build, if you build it, the people will just naturally come use your product or naturally want to come partner with you or integrate with you. That is completely false and has been proven wrong many times in the industry with teams that are very strong on the technical side, but did not invest in quality marketing people, quality BD people, and then good processes around that. Um, and the best founders in the industry understand this relationship that product and engineering needs good marketing and BD people and marketing and BD people are nothing without good product and engineering people. So it's very much a two-way relationship that are, that is, you know, absolutely critical to the success of the project. So invest in good people, spend the money, invest in good branding, invest in good content and product. It'll go a long way. Um, Moving on to creative design, another, the theme here is don't be cheap um, with this stuff. So don't be cheap with creative. You need to have quality content that looks professional, clean. Um, doesn't always have to be, it doesn't need to be corporate. It can be memes, but it needs to all have a kind of cohesive, great, great design. Um, you can outsource creative. You definitely don't need to build an internal creative team. So you can even start with a single designer. You can find these people online, Upwork, Fiverr, or a couple of examples of that. And then eventually when you have, you know, daily partnerships, daily content needs, you can, you can hire an agency for, there's a range, maybe 10 to, to 25,000 a month. You get like a full marketing agency, a content creation agency to build the stuff out for you. And then, um, just one other tip for earlier teams, um, building out a logo. I've used 99 designs in the past. It's actually really nice. You can put up a creative brief and then des designers from all over the world will actually submit designs and compete to win um, the, the money. It's usually like $500 or so. And wh whatever design you pick, they, they get the, the prize. But it's a good way to kind of crowdsource an early logo that, of course, can evolve over time. But for a V1, you don't need something you know, worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And then the last one, I already kind of covered this, but investing in great BD people. Um, you, the founders are of course the face and the personality of the project, but um, the, the BD people, when you start to scale, they also really become the face and the personality of your team. If you've got BD people who other BD people like, who they want to work with, who they trust, that will go such a long way in, in helping you scale effectively. This is a, a chart I made just to kind of put this into um, a visual for the importance of marketing versus product and engineering. Um, upper left, strong marketing, very poor product and engineering. This is just pure hype and will never lead to good outcomes. So they have low credibility in the industry, not much respect, um, not great. Bottom right is what I would call a disappointment. So they had amazing product and engineering, but they didn't invest or care about marketing and BD. So they had all this potential and they were a flop. They were a disappointment because there wasn't a relationship there between marketing and, and, and engineering. 
Bottom left is just wrecked. They have no, they have poor marketing, poor product and engineering. Probably won't ever hear of them. And then upper right, these are the leaders in the industry. So strong marketing, strong BD, killer product and engineering team. This is how you run a team in crypto. Um, scale through real partnerships and community crossover. So um, scaling through um, partnerships, but real partnerships, not just an announcement with logos, integrations. We, we, we actually never use, ra rarely use the word partnership because what is it? It's an actual integration between two pieces of technology. So building those integrations out and then building relationships between these teams. This is how you scale, not paying for inorganic fake Twitter followers or doing really anything inorganic or paid is just it immediately is a red flag. If you pull up a new project and see they have 300,000 Twitter followers, they are, uh, they're not going to do much. Um, partnership strategy. This is a BD just thing that I've kind of noticed over time. Um, doing BD from top down in terms of like top tier teams in the industry, you need to go from the top to the bottom. It's not going to pay off to, sh to partner with low quality teams and then try to work your way up. So if you're, I don't know, if you want to integrate with a DAX, start with Uniswap, start with Jupiter, work your way down. If you want to partner with lending markets, start with Aave, you know, the Aves of the world. They're, you're not going to always get yeses from these teams, which is an amazing chance to learn why. So that's where I have here, learn from your BD losses. So there will be teams that say no for various reasons. Maybe the other team has a specific feature that they like better with one of your competitors, learn from that, implement it on the product side, build out um, you know, the highest priority updates to your product to start turning these losses into wins. Um, and then scaling your community via partner communities. So this is a great way to scale things like Discord communities, Twitter followers, is by tapping into the communities of other teams in the industry. So writing content for them, even promoting them or writing tweets about your about your partners. Their communities are fans of their team, so naturally they will share, they will comment, um, which will then, sorry, then start to get you followers from their um, from their teams. Nearing the end. Um, grow your marketing team intentionally and slowly. So more practical advice here. So for the first hire on the marketing team, it's probably probably makes the most sense to not try to hire like a head of marketing senior person. Hire hands on a keyboard, um, a doer type of a person. So social media content, growth marketing person, these are the types of people who can really start to actually, you know, have value and have output. Um, from day one when you hire them. Then it makes sense to start thinking about a head of marketing. Um, this is the person who can start thinking more broadly about strategy, about how to build out the team and scaling over time. Um, another practical team building, this is not just marketing, but um, it doesn't work very well to build a team out across the entire world. Um, you need people in every time zone, but you really need to pick like two time zones um, to, to hire people, America and Europe, Americas and Europe, or Europe and Asia, they're close enough. Asia and the Americas just don't work well because it's 12 hour difference. So um, yeah, the best, the most effective teams I've seen optimize for either one or two time zones for the majority of their um, contributing teams and people. And then you can of course hire, you know, sub teams like a, if you're in the US and Europe or the Americas in Europe, of course you need a team in APAC, but it wouldn't be like the, the majority of your team. Um, don't be afraid to outsource some of your marketings. There's a lot of teams out there, um, Serotonin is an example, who do um, content marketing, growth marketing. You can outsource um, some of these people, some of these teams to people at marketing agencies who are very well trained and they can start you hit the ground running from day one instead of having to hire someone internally, onboard them, you get them up to speed, it takes months. So great option if you want to start scaling your marketing team faster. And then I would not 
over index a lot of times early stage founders will think that they need to get like press releases out and they're trying to they're like paying coin telegraph and, and and coindesk to try to get pr coverage first of all paid coverage isn't isn't great you don't need a pr firm early on um and then this question to ask yourself when you have any announcement is like would coindesk care to even write about this most of the times the answer is going to be no but once you get to a point you're going to start having you know announcements that are actually newsworthy and that's when it's time to start thinking about bringing on the pr firm you might have two or three real substantial announcements per month then it makes sense to bring on a pr agency there's several um in the industry not number nine craft your token incentive carefully um, this is a massive decision for every team um, to think through carefully to, to understand how various parties um, in particular the community like how will people you know think of this how are you incentivizing people is it fair etc um, so designing a tokenomic strategy that rewards your most loyal people and it is also kind of you know makes sense across the, the various pieces of the pie um, definitely a very impor important and irreversible decision. And then um, another thing, just a learning from airdrops, gradual unlocks for airdrops. I think the Phantom team did this recently, um, and there's other examples. This also is a good in incentive mechanism for keeping people you know, along for the ride and incentivize over a longer period of time rather than just doing an airdrop kind of all in one. And then number 10, um, don't fall for common mistakes. So these are just a few things I would say to, to avoid. I already mentioned this. Don't pump your t Twitter followers um, with fake numbers. It's a red flag. Don't be a technical co-founder or founder who thinks he or she can do all of the marketing by themselves for an extended period of time. That does not work. It also takes away from what you're good at, which is the technical side. Um, don't use building as an excuse for not being out there in public. Don't lead with incentives on the community building side and be your own, you know, be your own project, write your own playbook. Don't always, you know, copy and paste ideas that you see from other teams, whether it's ideas or strategies. So that is a wrap. I'll go back to this slide and just summarize. So. Um, these are the 10 marketing tips for crypto founders. I hope you guys learned um, a lot from these slides, and I'm happy to go into any detail on on questions, and I will send the deck to the team to distribute to everyone if you want to take a look after the fact. This was awesome, Dan. Thank you very much. Uh, lots of value, lots of stuff to unpack. And obviously, this could be a semester taught uh, course, not just <laughs> a 20, 30 minute uh, session. So um, if anybody has any questions, we have a question box. You can use the chat box as well. Um, very happy to go into other details. We still have time. Uh, I think people seem to have liked what you have said. <laughs> Uh, but it's hard. Like I, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, especially if you're a early stage team, three, four developers maybe come together. It's hard to bridge that gap, right? You and I have seen this quite a few times. Um, it it is definitely not the easiest uh, job to maybe find a non technical co founder that fits the bill, right? And and understands all of these things. Um, so yeah. It's definitely non-trivial. Can you please share the slides? Yes, we can share the slides, no worries. Uh, then you can send that to me and I'm gonna make sure we, we distribute them accordingly. Um, yeah, let's see if there's any questions. Any parting thoughts from your end? I know you you ran through this, um, lots of information in there. Any Anything that's still top of mind that you wanna share? Um, <laughs> not really, that, that was a big brain dump, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think if people, yeah, also like um, if people have questions after the fact on Twitter, um, I I check my DMs every once in a while, so feel free to, to send a message there. Um, and then yeah, also just yeah, thanks for Urban. Urban did a lot of work on setting up this Sigma program, so also just 
glad everyone's here and excited that you guys are getting started. Um, definitely go all in on, on Sigma. Like you're in the beginning phase of this, the challenge part, but then there's a lot to come with the acceleration, the seed funding. So we're definitely looking at this as a long-term relationship to go back to that with, with everyone on this call as, as engineers. And we definitely want to support you on the marketing side, like I just went through, but with every aspect of, of your, um, of your project and of your future business and company. So yeah, hundred percent, a hundred percent. Thank you very much. I think, um, yeah, just to double click on that, I think personal relationships are really what makes the difference here, right? To to be in it for the long haul. Uh, but just coming back to the Q and A, we do have a question: uh, events, uh, in person events, IRL events. Uh, what should teams consider when hosting uh, IRL events? Uh, apparently, we're doing a good job on the wormhole side. Uh, <laughs> uh, events seem to be there doing doing quite well. So, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, it totally depends on your project. Um, I can just use Wormhole as an example. Um, I guess one thing is that there are just thousands of events in crypto, um, hundreds per month. It's just impossible to go to all of them. So the, one of the biggest things is like this, your event strategy and the prioritization of where you're going to go and why you're going there. Um, one aspect of it is like major events. So um, if you're a new project, like it makes sense to go to like ETH CC in Europe. Um, it makes sense to be um, at ETH Denver, for example. Um, and then Token 2049 in Singapore is is definitely becoming one of the one of the best places to be um, every year. So that would be one is like bigger events, but then also targeted events. So for wormhole like we we started in the solana ecosystem we are the you know the primary interop platform for that entire chain so we prioritized breakpoint so we wanted to be there we were one of the key kind of co-sponsors etc and then smaller events also make a lot of sense so as you're as you're starting out you're not going to have the scale to be able to you know be one of the major sponsors of breakpoint for example but Prioritizing community-led events even is very important. So like Wilgish on our team has recently hosted events with local communities across Thailand, Malaysia. We did one in Hong Kong. Even if it's only 20, 40 people, that goes such a long way in early community building. So that's just a couple, yeah, a couple ideas, but Urban, do you have anything to add? It's a huge topic, isn't it, right? We, we still uh, struggle sometimes to put together proper KPIs, right? What, what's the actual goal here? And it, it's, it's very dependent um, of what you want to achieve. I mean, to me, honestly, looking at some of these sponsored decks, and you've seen your fair share as well, right? Um, costs are just insane. Right. So some of these sponsorships just do not make sense for early stage teams. Uh, but I think there's like a sweet spot of uh, a meetup strategy, maybe, right? Something that is low cost, literally pizza and beer. You don't have to go all out on fancy food or swag or whatever. Um, again, it comes back to that personal relationship. And I think you, you mentioned this a couple of times in the presentation. It does matter. Your first 10 people, your first 10 people are going to lead into the first 100, right? And so on and so on. You can't skip that step. It just does not work. You cannot skip that step. Um, so building these early stage relationships is, is very important. And even if you look at our events, right? Um, we've hosted Hologram, which, yeah, sure, it's a huge get together. We got a DJ and everything, but a lot of people don't know that it does have a dinner before that, right? Where we kind of get together with some of the, the closest partners that we work with, um, which is kind of, you know, doubling down on essentially that, uh, bringing people together. So like you said, I think I fully agree. It depends what you, what you want to achieve, how much money you have, what your overall strategy is, where you're based, right? All of these, uh, things. So. Um, yeah, we do have one more question. So let's see if we, we have a couple more minutes. Um, sometimes I make the mistake of wanting to do good marketing before putting something into action. How do I find a balance between the time spent marketing and executing something? Um, I think it just goes back to what I said about how marketing needs product and engineering. Um, actually, probably even more than engineers need marketing, to be honest. but. Um, with that being said, I think the most important thing is like if you're building a new project or a new product, like you gotta you gotta do that first. You gotta 
build an MVP or like a V1, um, definitely before you start doing marketing. So I would say like, I think that's what the question's kind of talking about. So executing on the what's actually being built first. Um, and then as you start to think about like the UI, the UX, and then even, yeah, the whole thing of, that I just went through on content, community, that all comes after. But yeah, you have to be executing um, on the product and engineering side to have any chance of doing decent marketing. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough balance though. Uh, if you think about it, you're usually probably in a team of one, two, three, four people, maybe all technical. Uh, you want to ship, but you want to get the word out. Uh, if you start getting the word out, it takes away hours that you can spend shipping uh, the the product project that you're building. So, um, I mean, it, it's definitely not the easiest choice. Um, but like you said, you know, get the product into a decent stage, um, and then it's going to be much easier to talk about what you've built, right? It's not just some <laughs> something in the cloud, right? Some something up there that you're doing, but it's it becomes very concrete. So yeah. All right. Uh let's see. Oh, we have a question in the question box. Um ah, it's the same thing. All right. Cool. I think we hopefully we've answered this. Um yeah, if there's no more questions, uh, I think we can wrap up the session for today. Thank you very much, uh, Dan, for taking the time and putting this presentation together. I think it was an, an absolute banger. Uh, loads and loads of uh, information, loads of value for early stage teams, founders to uncover, to dig in. Um, and like you said, we're all here, right? If you want to talk to us, if you want to reach out, please feel free to, to reach out um, on Telegram, on Twitter, on email. Uh, at least my contact details should be fairly um, easily reachable. So yeah, thank you very much, Dan. This was fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.